Hello, and many thanks for keeping us company. This is why in the morning we want to see how people are fighting COVID-19. It's been around 100 days now since uh, the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Kenya and there has been a lot of containment measures that the government through the Ministry of Health has come up to help us to flatten the curve or even to control uh, the virus now with the claims that uh, to get to a point where we will live with the virus here with us now but uh, that remains to be seen we will be looking in the masks that uh, people have been required and asked to wear them uh, we have had uh, the WHO recommending the N95 to uh, health, uh, health workers and even home caregivers. And of course, we know it is very expensive. Even here in the country, it is expensive. Our uh, medical practitioners have a problem with having it, including the PPEs. So it has been a struggle. And even the members of the public are requested to wear a mask in Kenya every time they are out here. But now, which masks should you have? How about if you can't afford, considering majority of our population is made of uh, the vulnerable families? So we have a group of people who have decided we're going to help people have mask, reusable mask. And I want them to tell us about the uh, mask. I'm speaking to Boniface Betty and uh, Yvonne, Yvonne uh, Gache. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Habari yenu. Mkopoa. All right. Now, uh, I want to begin with you, Boon. First, tell me about the Green String Network. How did it begin? And uh, by the way, what informed your decision coming up with the idea of helping people? Okay. Thank you so much, Hilary. So, uh, uh, so, as you correctly put it, we work for an organization called the Green String Network. Mm -hmm. So, Green String Network is... Uh, an organization that has been around for the last three years. Mm -hmm. And we are mainly a peace building organization. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way we do peace building work for us is not necessarily uh, doing uh, conflict negotiation or uh, conflict resolution per se. Mm -hmm. We are responding, we are an organization that is created to respond to social conflicts at most. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> we use different approaches to this. So our organization uses the trauma-informed lens, mm -hmm. uh, creating awareness about the impacts of trauma on communities and how that affects communities' well-being and resilience. Mm -hmm. So we are a resilience-building organization and we work uh, with community organizations. So we are a network of organizations. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically when uh, COVID-19 broke out in this country, we traditional like, uh, for the past three years, we have been working with communities through a program called Kumekucha, mm -hmm. which is mainly a community uh, initiative that is working with, uh, that was created to respond to things like violent extremism, mm -hmm. but also things like gender-based violence and uh, all forms of violence by breaking the cycles of violence, especially in communities that are plagued by the trauma, for example, of continuous conflicts. Mm -hmm. So when we began to do that, we, we spent time doing that in, Mom, in, in coast, in Nairobi, here in Majengo, but also in, uh, in the entire coast region, uh, responding to violent extremism, working with communities, especially those families that have been directly impacted by violent extremism. Yeah. So after that, we also came up with a program that has been working with the National Police Service. Okay. It's called Mwankompia. Well, while we worked with the community members, uh, they always told us mm -hmm. that you are doing amazing work, we really love your work, mm -hmm. but how comes you are not working with the members of the National Police Service? Sort of like to say like we are the good guys and the, the, the bad guys who really need a lot of help. No, so sorry, this is in regards now to the gender-based violence. This is now what our organization has been doing so far, uh -huh. especially in regards to uh, working with communities, right. but now working with the National Police Service before we came to now the next step okay. of uh, working on responding to COVID-19. Right. So the first thing was communities, and then we started to work with the National Police Service. With the National Police Service, we came up with a program that was almost the same as the community one, mm -hmm. but also working with members of National Police Service to look at, for example, 
what do cycles of violence within the practice and the culture of policing in Kenya, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, uh, cycles of violence are manifest there? Mm -hmm. And who is the best person to tell us that? It is the police uh, officers themselves. So mm -hmm. we spend time with them, reflecting and looking at the different types of uh, cycles of violence that are inherent within the structures or that police, individual police officers face on uh, routinely mm -hmm. in their daily uh, execution of their, their mandates as police officers. Mm -hmm. So that happened. Uh, we just ended it. We launched that program. It was launched by the Inspector General Police. And Mwamkompia, as it is referred to, was recommended to be used in training institutions for National Police Service to help the policing service uh, adopt trauma-informed practices in their work. Mm -hmm. And then we were just at the verge, we had just completed launching this program that COVID-19 broke out in Kenya. Right. So we spent time as an organization thinking how can we respond mm -hmm. to the pandemic uh, and especially the fact that uh, COVID-19 has exacerbated, like brought to the surface some of the uh, already existent social problems. Mm -hmm. So we started to reflect on that and that is where now we came to the whole idea of uh, launching uh, the mask, the family uh, mask initiative in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And this initiative has actually, uh, the person that we've been working with with Yvonne in our organization right. has been leading these efforts. Mm -hmm. It seems you have quite a journey uh, from where you've come and I see you have a lot of ideas on how helping uh, the communities and now even working with the police considering they're part of the community only that they are the men in uniform anyway mm -hmm. uh, but they are part of us. Now Yvonne, for the last uh, 100 days uh, you, people have been wearing masks by mask you leave, if you're leaving home, come out here with a mask, uh, lest you be arrested. And uh, I've heard all manner of things, whether you have the mask or you don't have, others are wearing, how will you? And you ask them, it's because um, I'm afraid of the officers, they'll be arrested. But we need to wear a mask if you need to be protected. Now, having come up with the idea of having the mask, how has the journey been? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, the journey of getting to the mask actually started before it was made mandatory by the government. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, COVID broke out, it was just three days after we had done the Momcompia launch. We launched on the 10th of March, mm -hmm. and on the 13th of March, the first case was reported in Kenya. And we started to quickly research about what other countries are doing in regards to protecting themselves against COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and the masks, wearing a mask was one of them. But also finding a comfortable mask mm -hmm. was an uphill task. So there are those masks that have elastic that pull on your ears. Mm -hmm. And then there are the masks that... Um, have a, such an uneasy fit. I don't know whether you've seen them. They they come up to here and then you look like you have a muzzle on. Right. There are all these uh, masks. And so for us, finding a comfortable mask, even as we continued to go to the office, and of course we started with our stay at, work at home order. Right. So we started working from home. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Bonnie and others decided we can no longer work from home because then we'll just be succumbing to COVID has hit us mm -hmm. and we don't have a solution. Oh, yeah. So what do we do? We started to look for a comfortable mask and also to look at messaging that looked like us. Mm -hmm. So it's actually the illustrations of COVID messaging that looks like us. You've seen the hand washing ones, mm -hmm. the ones that have all white hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen those ones, <laughs> right? So <laughs> we started making paintings, illustrations mm -hmm. that look like us, messaging that said how to prep properly wear a mask, but that had a Kenyan face. Mm -hmm. We've made illustrations. We have a Google site app. Mm -hmm. <coughs> with uh, all free illustrations that you can download and you can get all our material there. You can print, stick them up in your office space and things like that. So in the process of that, mm -hmm. we, came, we came across a comfortable uh, mask that you could wear. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I, this can be seen. 
this is the mask that we chose right this mask looks uh simple yeah. but it's not very simple it's actually my own personal mask that's why it's a bit crisp because <laughs> yeah. i washed it over the weekend mm -hmm. and it's a three ply mask right so it's made of a used kanga mm. and then these straps look like uh, the ones for suspenders for glasses so you can't lose this mask mm. that means you also cannot leave it lying around mm -hmm. so that your uh, child can pick it or your wife can pick it oh i'm going to the shop mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then they pick it and they wear it and they go to the shop because one of the things with covid is you're not supposed to share masks yeah exactly so when your mask is usually around your face which it wears like this mm -hmm. so when it's hung around your face like this it stops people from sharing masks right then or even forgetting it somewhere or forgetting it yes then you get arrested <laughs> then you get arrested <laughs> <laughs> then you get arrested, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple um, <clears throat> wear mask. Mm -hmm. So you put it around your neck. Mm -hmm. And this design was actually made uh, by a lovely lady called Carol Davy. Mm -hmm. Carol Davy made these masks and gave them to Jason, the first lot. Where is she from? Uh, she's from Karen. She sews as a hobby. Karen here in Kenya. Uh, Karen here in Kenya. Okay. Here in Nairobi. <laughs> in Nairobi. <laughs> Karen in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. So Carol Davy does sewing as a hobby. So she came up with many prototypes. As she also continued to research online mm -hmm. on how, what is the correct standard. Mm -hmm. So she she did the one ply, then she did the two ply. She started with the elastic, and then the elastic got very expensive. Mm -hmm. Then she decided, oh, what if I actually put a strap around it like this? Mm -hmm. But then the challenge was, how was she going to sew it on? Mm -hmm. Put this on and like sew it on. And she discovered if she did a one fold mm -hmm. on on a piece of cut out kitenge mm -hmm. i learned that this one is called unfold according unfold. to the fundies because yeah. when you cut it mm -hmm. you cut the material out like this and then unfold you fold it once mm -hmm. and you stitch once 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 okay so you stitch four times but you only fold it once so um and inside it has an, a piece of old t-shirt and that's why it's very affordable. Well, that's why you're calling it the, uh, the three ply. ply. Yes. It has another piece inside. It has yeah. another piece inside, which now the mm -hmm. old t shirt acts as a filter. Mm -hmm. Then you. Um, okay, the t shirt, the material, what is it made of? Cotton. It's all cotton. And mm -hmm. why cotton? Mm -hmm. Because cotton helps you breathe. I'm sure you've heard stories of people wearing masks and passing out. Oh, he was jogging, wearing his mask, and he passed out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've heard those stories, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's been reported. But why cotton? Because cotton is a breathable material, mm -hmm. and it helps you breathe. And it makes the wearing of the mask very comfortable. And when you can wear the mask comfortably, then you don't have to take it off. All right. Yeah. So I'd like to do a small demo mm -hmm. um, of how to wear the Carol mask. We call it the Carol mask after Carol Davy. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Yes. Okay. So you just pull it up like that, and then you, when you crimp the sides like this, it ensures that no, no air gets in or gets out. Then you have like a small pocket. Mm -hmm. You put your face up. So because mine is old, I just do like this quickly. Put it around my neck and tie. If you look at the sides uh -huh. here, uh -huh. no oxygen is no no air is coming in and no uh -huh. air is coming out. We 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 have some demand. You repeat what you have just <laughs> done. Okay. People want to follow the doning. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So. You put it around your neck. Mm -hmm. So here it is. You put it around your neck like right. that. Mm -hmm. Then you bring it up to your face. You pull the sides of the string. While it's here. While it's here. Okay. So that it covers under your chin. Mm -hmm. It covers up to your nose. 
and then you pull it mm-hmm. and then you tie I have a question on that. Mm-hmm. We, you've just uh, adjusted it according to how you feel you're comfortable. Yeah. But then we have this mask when you're speaking, it is pulled by the chin down and then your nose is left exposed. So I could actually leave it on. Let me tie it properly. And I'll continue the rest of the show with my mask on. Mm-hmm. And you'll actually see it doesn't move mm-hmm. because it's adjusted to my the shape of my face mm-hmm. and how like it, it um, how I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference with the Carol mask. Mm-hmm. And like these other masks, also because of how tight it is here, if I had glasses on, they wouldn't steam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So it's a it's a huge huge plus because I. I found people saying, I, I, you know, I can't wear a mask when I'm driving. Why? Because I wear spectacles, and if I wear a mask, they're going to steam up, mm. and I can't see. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, these are the masks that you have come up with, uh, Carol Davis masks. Yeah. Uh, very recommendable. Yeah. But now you have chosen to deal with the vulnerable families. Yes. Uh, we saw during the first case of wearing the mask in Mombasa, we saw a lady and a child wearing the bottle and uh, it cost an uproar to many people because they were like, you could have just cut something and cover your mouth. How have, how, what, which criteria are you using to, ge- to get to these vulnerable families? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good question. But just before maybe we answer this question of criteria of getting to the vulnerable families, I mm-hmm. just want to re- reiterate what Yvonne was saying, especially when this thing broke out in Kenya, just a quick one, mm-hmm. is that the biggest questions we had were like, how do we, uh, how do we create key message, life-saving messages mm-hmm. to help people protect themselves from this uh, pandemic, the virus especially, specifically? All right. And what we did was like, for example, what do people, and maybe you'll follow up on that question, but we started to ask ourselves, what do people understand by social distancing, by uh, isolation, by staying at home, mm, quarantine, quarantine <laughs> in the real world? Mm-hmm. Because you see, because these things were coming from uh, interna- the international community, but also coming through our official Ministry of Health channels. Right. But how do you apply that, for example, in a crowded market? or on a matatu stage, mm-hmm. or on uh, like in, in a crowded place, you know, mm-hmm. which is our reality here. So those were some of the questions we had. And then we created now, probably we'll also talk about like the fact that we started to work with local artists mm-hmm. to be able to develop uh, like using illustrations and drawings. Mm-hmm. For example, this is a market and this is what you can do to keep social distancing, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we started to use paintings and drawings to do that mm-hmm. and uh, also uh, send specific key messages mm-hmm. to the people in vernacular languages mm-hmm. like in Kikuyu, Kiswahili, Luya, in Luo. Mm-hmm. So we have interpreters and people who have helped us to do that. Yeah. So we, all, we have all these posters mm-hmm. that we are giving together with the masks mm-hmm. that have messages and images to show, for example, if you are a matatu conductor mm-hmm. or if you are sitting in a matatu, this is what you can do about social distancing. This is what it means in the real world. Right. So that is not just something that is removed. It is localized. People feel it is part of our story. Mm-hmm. Because right now we are dealing with situations where some people even are saying there is no coronavirus. Yeah, so how yeah, do yeah, you yeah. make them understand this is something that is a real threat on their lives. Mm-hmm. But even maybe before we talk a little bit about that, maybe Yvonne can tell us about like your criteria of selecting, because we have a very unique criteria mm-hmm. of getting the mass to the, unique, uh, to the needy families. Yeah, and of course when it comes to having the, the, the criteria to get the vulnerable communities, yeah. we've had issues, people take, having interest I may declare I I am vulnerable, but in real sense, I am not just because I want to benefit. Then I deny someone who is really in need the chance to have it. How are you coming up with the idea and getting the the real ones? Okay, uh, thank you for that. So at the initial beginning, uh, when we started, uh, in fact, doing the COVID illustrations, because that came before the Carol mask, Mm -hmm. when we started doing that, 
Uh, we sent out our community facilitator. We have uh, one young man. We are based in Loresho. Mm -hmm. And we sent one young man to our neighborhood there in Kangemi. And he went around and collected stories of what are people doing and how are they living mm -hmm. with the changing times. Mm -hmm. And we realized that as Green String Network, it is going to be very hard for us to mm -hmm. identify the needy families. Mm -hmm. Because if we go on the ground, everybody looks needy. Everybody looks like they have a need. Like you said, somebody might even pose mm. like they're needy. And so they might um, take advantage True. of some place where somebody else would have gotten the chance. So now what we did is we started, after sending out our community facilitator, we started to figure out why not use the existing community-based organizations mm -hmm. to actually work with families mm -hmm and pinpoint for us who needs the help right so we work with community already existing community-based organizations mm -hmm. some which use nyumbakum initiative like in kangemi we are also working closely with the chief's office mm -hmm. which gives us direction and tells us you know uh, this is a needy community this is uh, these are needy families and usually we put our masks into food rations mm -hmm. that are distributed then into the community Mm, all right. Yeah. Now, um, for the period that you have been in operation, how has the reception been? Uh, what are some of the challenges you have gone through in trying to help uh, these particular persons? Uh, I think because the situation, the coronavirus or COVID-19 situation is, is a fast evolving situation. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of changes that happen like every single day. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges we also face uh, is that the need is huge, it's overwhelming. Right. So if you are thinking, for example, what Yvonne was saying, we are working in Kangemi, for example, we are also working in Kawangware, we are also trying to reach out to Isli. Just those areas alone, those are informal s settlements mm -hmm. and with high vol density volumes of populations. So the challenges is that we, we will really want to provide as many masks as possible. Mm -hmm. So the challenge we have also is that we really want to partner with different people, mm -hmm. organizations or even private sector mm -hmm. to be able to provide as many masks as possible. Because a mask alone can go a long way to save a life. Mm -hmm. A person who has a mask that is uh, properly worn, a mask that is, uh, that, that is created in a clinically sound way, mm -hmm. will be able to, to survive will not be able to get infected just like a person who doesn't have a mask. So in terms of like, you look at it in terms of econo uh, cost of economics, economics of scale, mm -hmm. then you realize it's cost effective to have a mask than even use, because again, at the end of the day, we are working in very low resource settings. Mm -hmm. Public health people call these kind of settings low resource settings where people don't have a lot of capital. Mm -hmm. So masks come in as life-saving items mm -hmm. for people. And to have this kind of mask, like Yvonne is explaining, mm -hmm. uh, that is made by uh, tailors who are women who are based in these communities, you know, mm -hmm. from materials like T-shirts and lessos and or kangas, I think that makes this enterprise a little bit more cost-effective mm -hmm. and at the same time, life-saving for majority of our big population in the informal settlements. True. Yeah. Now, even uh, most of the people had lost their jobs when COVID-19 came and we, uh, Boniface has just mentioned the fundies and I know, yeah, majority of them had prepared themselves for events and all, all of those um, designs, but now COVID came. They are now benefiting from uh, this. How else can we make even the least person who never expected, like uh, you, the mask have been made. Have you gotten the distributors or are you just doing it by yourselves? So uh, thank you for that. Uh, one of the pillars of the Carol Mask Initiative, mm -hmm. <coughs> the Family Cloth Mask Initiative, is giving a livelihood to the women. Mm -hmm. So alongside, um, alongside identifying communities, that are vulnerable. One of the things we started to identify is 
tailors whose businesses had adversely been affected mm -hmm. by the COVID-19 pandemic. So like Bonnie mentioned earlier, we were working with the community and we were working with the police pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So when COVID struck, as part of our COVID response, is we continued to work with the same constituents. We continued working with our community members mm -hmm. and we continued working with our police families. Mm -hmm. So some of our tailors are police wives. Like, I will tell you the story of one police wife who, as she was coming for our training mm -hmm. the very first time, to learn how to stitch the carol mask, mm -hmm. her, she got called that her husband had gotten an accident. The husband is a police officer, yes, he's serving, mm -hmm. and he broke both legs yeah. and needed to go into surgery. Mm -hmm. But that also meant that she now becomes the sole breadwinner mm -hmm. of the family. Um, she went to hospital, stayed with him, came back for the, for the training, and after she came for the training, she went home with her package of masks and mm -hmm. asked for an extended period of time to sew because she was in between hospital. And that's how we continue to help the constituents that we're still working with. Mm -hmm. So we continue to work with uh, women in uh, the community who mm -hmm. earn a little bit of money from mm -hmm. sewing our masks. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are creating the livelihood for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we get the donations of the mask, mm -hmm. of, of the material to sew the masks, mm -hmm. and we have an MPESA number where you can send in donations of cash, mm -hmm. the cash goes into paying the women mm -hmm. and the material goes into making the masks. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win and then the mask mm -hmm. go back into the community. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a win-win for everyone. It's uh, what Carol calls a Kenyan for Kenya. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm sure many people can remember that initiative. Mm -hmm. Carol reminded us of that when we asked her why she's not pan making, uh, putting a patent to her design. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's, a, it's me as a Kenyan giving back to the Kenyan society. Right. Yeah. And so this is a Kenyan for Kenyan initiative where all the money and all the material we are collecting goes into making the mask, the mm -hmm. money goes into paying the women, mm -hmm. and the mask actually go back into society. So, so it's like a, a livelihood uh, kind of uh, support system. Right. Because imagine in these informal settlements, you have a family of like an average family of like maybe six people in the house, mm -hmm. you know, and mostly they use these masks that are like, uh, you buy a mask even for 50 shillings yeah. daily for the six people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might look very easy for some people, but if, you're cons if you are a person who is worried about your survival needs, mm. that can be a huge, uh, it can be a huge challenge. Actually, I'm looking at one of your posters. Uh, actually, it was uh, running on TV. Uh, I'm seeing for 1,000 Kenyan shillings, yeah. uh, this can cater for eight members of the family exactly. reusable. If, if you get these 1,000, can stand for these people. Uh, it's right on the screens. And then we have 1,500 can support a family of six with 12. Exactly. Reusable. And guess what? This is something that we can be done by the Kenyan themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, I saw in Limuru the other day on TV, there is a, a whole flat where people have been identified to be COVID-19 positive. The community members who are farmers mm -hmm. are feeding them. They are feeding one of their own, like their neighbors in the villages, but mm -hmm. they are coming to feed people who are living in a flat, mm -hmm. give, bringing them sukumawiki, bringing them potatoes, mm -hmm. and all these kind of things. So this is something that Kenyans can be able to do, especially for majority of family members, mm -hmm who are in the informal settlements that might really not be able to afford buying masks every day. Mm -hmm. Just by supporting this simple initiative mm -hmm. and the tailors are based within these informal settlements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, to this end, who is your greatest uh, partner? Or who are you looking for? Are you working with the government? Minister of Health has been saying we will have as cheap as 50 and 30 or even 20. I remember the first days they were saying we will have masks for 20 shillings, of which uh, I, I am not <laughs> saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that because even this fundi will need food to eat. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And there are families to cater for. Actually, how much is this mask? The reply from our friend. We have not sold this mask. We have not sold 
any of them. Mm -hmm. So unless you're asking at cost, mm -hmm. you're at asking cost at, yeah, at cost. Co cost of production. Mm -hmm. So cost of production, um, if you're to buy all the material, including um, paying the fundi, mm -hmm. it comes to about 70 shillings. Mm -hmm. Per mask. Per mask. Mask, see. Yes. Yeah. It comes to about 70 shillings per mask. And um, why, it why it comes to about 70 shillings per mask is also because mm -hmm. of our production scale. Okay. You know, if we produce larger amounts, mm -hmm. of course, the cost of production goes down. But if we are producing in small scale like we are currently, then that's why the cost of the production is that high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the families get two masks per family member. We get, uh, why do they get two masks per, per family member? So that you can wash one mm -hmm. and wear one. Yeah, yeah. So that even today, as it is cold, if I wash this one and hang it out to dry, by tomorrow mm -hmm. in the morning, it's actually dry and it's made of uh, cotton and it's not very heavy cotton, mm -hmm. it's a kanga. Mm -hmm. So it will be dry by morning. Mm -hmm. And when it's dry, then I can wear, I can wash the other one I had mm -hmm. and wear this one. Okay. So you always ensure you have a clean mask to wear. Mm -hmm. And for every member of the family, of course, children under, under three are not wearing masks. And so, yeah. or, or, I, I, we are out of time. We have only one minute. Okay. And uh, before I come to you, I'd like you just to have one call this is your camera tell some someone um, uh, something from home uh, what you're looking forward to and how you'd want to be helped then we'll be closing with you boniface okay okay uh, so i would like to make an appeal to anybody who can the youth especially this is our time to protect the nation to protect our loved ones and the vulnerable ones so uh, this is a rallying call to help us pass word round, share uh, as much information as you can. If you can donate your old t-shirts, kangas, if you can do an MPSA donation, kindly do so. Let's help protect our nation. Let's help protect our vulnerable uh, against COVID-19. All right. Thank you, Yvonne. Boniface, you, your recommendations and, uh, as, as we finish. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Hilary. So the thing is, we would like to make an appeal to all, especially stakeholders, like we are all, actually we are not even stakeholders, we are all shareholders in this country. Mm -hmm. And the life of each, each member of this country, great nation, really matters. In the past we have overcome serious national crises and we have always emerged as winners. Mm -hmm. But the best thing we have to do right now is to think about the vulnerable members of our society mm -hmm. who are our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Recently we have just seen that police officers have started to be infected by this virus and that is really, really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. We are also providing masks for police families actually mm -hmm. and this is something we are also working on. Okay. So we really want to appeal to the nation, private sector mm -hmm. and companies, uh, other organizations, businesses, we would really love to partner with you on this course. Okay. This is a course that is really, really important for our, our, our dignity as a country. Okay. We cannot allow members, our brothers and sisters, to suffer and to get infected by COVID-19 virus mm -hmm. just because they don't have a mask that will have been afforded, f afforded if we contributed to this great cause. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Boniface and uh, Yvonne, for coming. And back home, I trust you have learned something about this uh, mask. And you are out there. You have your old clothes you do want to donate. You have a place to take it now. Uh, stop piling things. We have people to help. Your T-shirt, your kanga will go a long way to helping us flatten the curve by the use of mask and helping the vulnerable families in our society. I was uh, speaking to Boniface Betty. He's a uh, program manager, Green Strings Network, and Yvonne Gashe, programs assistant, Mwamko Mpia. I'll be seeing you again very soon, um, later in the day with the updates from the Ministry of Health, and late in the evening we'll be having a discussion on women and power. Stay tuned to Y254. Till then, enjoy the rest of our programming. My name is Adereva Hilary. Good morning.